Welcome to the Hawaii Keiki Museum. So there's been a lot going on these last couple of weeks and I really would like to show you how awesome the girls did during the fashion show or how beautiful the artwork was that came out of the geology, the lapidary clinic. But unfortunately, due to the child protection and uh, not having permission from all of the kids involved, I still can't show you that kind of footage. But if you are interested in seeing some clips and some little snips of what has been happening, what's been going on at the museum, head on over to Instagram and check out our uh, feed there because that's where we post things from time to time as they're happening and as they're going on. So there's definitely some cool stuff there. But what I'm gonna be talking about today is something a little bit different, a little bit interesting. Um, we've been using Square and overall, I'm really happy with Square. I like it as a point of sale. I like it for its website, it, the free website. I like it for all of the hosting. I like the pages and the creation, the things that uh, Square can provides and, and offers. Let me tell you, I love that online contactless payment, cell phone to cell phone. Um, so useful when you're out in the field, like doing a vendor booth or something. But today I want to talk about one aspect of that website, one aspect of Square's website that's a little odd. It's a little difficult. Let me show you. So here we are looking at, so this is our homepage. And when I scroll down, you can see what we like to have on our homepage are our events. So here's where you can see the events placeholder. This workshop pop-up and festival is not events that we're currently running right now. Currently, we don't have anything running. So this is what Square gives you for the default placeholder. All right, what's interesting to note about events is that there's three ways to do it wrong. <laughs> and I don't know why Square hasn't fixed this yet. The first way to do it wrong is to create an event that is not inside the, the website. So the first thing I wanted to show you was how the item library method where you create an event in the item library, right? The item library is what you use for your point of sale. This is a, a terrible way to create an event that you want to show up on the home page. Um, and the reason for this is that the uh, uh, event that you create here, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna create an event called um, upcoming event. Uh, and so this is where we put in our category events. So again, uh, we're entering the category, but this is an event category, um, not like an event type. So this is now an item, an item that would be like in your shop or on your website. And then you can see right here, my item types are events and workshops. So you can see immediately that this is not creating an event a special item that is called an event within the square system. This is creating a like physical item. Uh, this is creating a physical item that is a just has the name event. Um, so even though we can make this visible um, and one of the things that makes me crazy is this idea that you would track uh, by default. Um, so here's our square online setting. So we come down here and we say, okay, it's visible online. So even though this is now you know visible online, when we go into the online store, you'll see um, very quickly that this item doesn't exist. So um, bummer that there's a way to create a category or an item that isn't the correct methodology. All right, here we are back in the online section and you can see when I scroll down to items, item pages, um, so there is no item here for the, uh, uh, even though it's visible, there's no item page that's been created, which is, that's to be understood. Um, and again, that means, you know, there's nothing in the categories. So we go here to the home page, and on the home page, which um, you can see I have events listed. Um, if I try to um, uh, add a event uh, that, that's the one we just created, if we choose an event, you'll see that it says there's no events to choose from that are um, this test event isn't in our list. So even though these items that you see he listed here are um, events that we've had in the past, um, they're not categorized. It's the wrong word because categories are something else again altogether. Um, they're not an actual event type. So because the event that we created was an item type, um, 
it doesn't show up. So we cannot create a featured event out of our um, method one of that uh, uh, using the square point of sale uh, event category. All right, so that one's sort of an obvious one, but let's try a, a new method here, which is let's uh, create a new item uh, within the home, within the uh, within online. So within the website, we're going to create an item, and this time we have this, the option of making an item type. So now we know we're not doing a physical item; we're doing an event, which is giving us a correct item type. So now we have done the correct thing, and now we're t calling our upcoming event. Um, um, coming soon event again uh, we'll call this one fifteen dollars and this is um, event type number two um, and annoyingly super annoyingly we don't have like a drop down with our location already populated so it gives you this blank thing okay Okay, so now we have to pick a date, right? This is something, you know, so we'll, we'll choose a date. Uh, we'll, we'll make it April for Fool's Day. Um, so, and we'll do a thing at uh, 3 a.m. Um, and we'll make the thing last for one hour. So there we go. Now we can actually create an event. Um, and so now I'm going to go to more options, which is the thing that um, uh, allows you to actually put in the real information. So annoyingly, it's like, okay, create an event for item type but since you're doing such a limited section of it, you might as well just immediately start with this more options. All right, so now we've got our coming soon event, $15, event type number two. So this is the second one we've done. We are visible within the thing, so that's good. Um, we're calling it tax exempt. Again, here's where we really get out of um, uh, uh, sorts because again, we're, we're, we have this tracking issue, which uh, the item will automatically be sold out and no events are available. And um, when you say, when you click on this update page, you get thrown back into where we just were, which is the item types that are the physical items. And then you have to turn the tracking off. So I'm not gonna do that yet because that will definitely uh, uh, throw us into a very weird part of the flow. But we're gonna go back to uh, where we were starting to do the location, right? And the location address. Um, and again, now if I try to hit save, and even if I had tried to hit save before, it's going to actually throw an error that says um, you don't have the address populated and address is mandatory. So again, there's this annoying uh, feature that you have to have addresses, but that it won't auto populate the address for you. Um, so here, let's put in our address um, and we do a physical address. We are doing our start date at 3 a.m. Stop. Um, and we don't have any other. Oh, so, so here's where we can actually put the category, that item type category, um, back in here, which is our events and workshops. Oh, no. So here's what I've done. I've created uh, another set of categories, which is our online event category. And the reason why I call it online events is that helps me differentiate between that events and workshops category, which is the category for the physical items. Um, so let's call this a workshop. So we're going to call this an online workshop, our little category. So now when it shows up in the physical item list, it does show up. All right. So when I hit save, Now we should actually save it um, as a, an actual item. There we go, coming soon event. Of course, we don't have an image uh, in here, but at least we have some information and we have our little detail and our, our location. Now, if I edit my item details, now we're back into the, the big item details, right? Not that little box that it kind of gives you at first. Um, Now we can go in and we'll do this update. Okay, so now when we update stock and we try to turn stock tracking off, it shows up in our square physical item list. Click tracking off, let's hit save. Okay, good, we got there in the end. 
All right, so now that we've created our item, we can scroll back down here to item pages. It's not a standard page, it's an item page. And there is our coming soon event. And we have our event page. Again, we don't have an image in here right now, but at least we have our description and our title and our pricing and all the things that we need. So now that I've created a event, um, I would like to put this event again on the home page as one of these featured items. So again, you can see here are the featured events. So I'm going to go in here to choosing events and I, I do have the coming soon event in here. So let's see if we can save this. All right. I don't want to publish it, but let's preview it, see what it looks like. Okay, looks fair enough. So our coming soon event now is uh, a featured event. All right, here is another method for creating an event. Uh, so I'm in here in the home on the home page, and I'm in here in our um, something happening uh, events, and I'm going to simply add a featured event, and instead of selecting something from the list, I'm going to create a new event. Again, we're back into this little dialog box, which um, if I try to hit save will give me error messages about not having my address. So I'm not even going to bother messing with the little dialog box. I'm just going to go right into the more options. All right, so here we are in more options and immediately it knows that the item type is event. Uh, and our new uh, event is going to be um, salt appreciation. Uh, and it's going to be a free event at the museum. All right, so again, we're sort of we're in a dialog box, and if I hit update here, it's going to pop me into another dialog box on top of the dialog box. It does look like this might be working now, though. So I can untrack the stock, update the stock without having to go back into the square item price list within the POS. I can stay here in the website, and it does look like this is now working. So they've they've fixed this bug. Again, our location is the Hawaii Kiki Museum at our address. And Salt Appreciation Day is April. All right, here we go. We've now created a good item for our all right we have ourselves a event uh, it's a free event and it does have a little attend button and you can see here there's a bug where it doesn't preview the image that we've uploaded but we are in pretty good shape when we preview this uh, again, the preview does not show the image, but when we publish the page, it will actually show up with the correct. All right, here we are on our website. This is now the live part of the page, and you can see that when I scroll down, we have our event, the Salt Appreciation Day event. And what I want to check is if this bug still happens, where when I click Attend, it does not go into my cart. You can see my cart is empty. So I can click attend all day long. Oh, there we go. So I clicked attend. Now it's showing, you know, zero dollars. And I want to add it to my cart. So I go into my cart and my cart is empty. So this bug about not being able to sign up for events uh, from the web page happens when you're on this these featured events on the home page and it will always be that the cart is empty uh, sorry the page settings so the salt appreciation day page is called salt appreciation day 309 so let's throw that up into the top of the url fine so i'm going straight to the product page now not using that uh, featured events pop-up that's on the home page. So now that we're in the page, 
uh, when I am here directly on the page, you can see the color of the button is a little different and my cart now works. So this is something that uh, is definitely a bug within Square where you're using the, um, the featured event page and it goes through and the cart will always be empty. But if you redirect people to the page itself or you have them reload it as the product page, the product page will go into their cart. And now when I click it again, you'll see that I have two in my cart. So the product page works. The feature page has a bug. All right, one more thing. Let's go back to the home page. I can go into buy tickets, load it up again, and card is empty. All right, one more time. Let's go back to that product page, the one that works. Salt Appreciation Day 309. Now this is the one that works and shows that I have things in my cart. If I go now from this page back over to buy tickets and I come back to this landing page, now I believe it will work. Yes, it works. So this page from the buy tickets, so if I'm using header navigation to get to the product page, it will either work if I have recently been at the product page, the 309 page, or it won't work if I have most recently been at the uh, front home page, the feature page, which is the one that does not work with the light box. So this page where I'm buying a product from the shop purchasing page, the buy tickets page, um, depends upon where you came from. So bizarre, bizarre bug in Square, this empty cart bug. Um, and definitely I have customers because they're coming from both ways. Sometimes they're coming actually from like Google search. And I don't know if Google search is dropping them straight into the product page or if it's dropping them onto the home page. But um, however my customers are coming in, half of them, you know, say no problem. It worked perfectly. And the other half are saying, oh, yeah, the, my, I try to put something in my cart and it's not going into the cart. And I know what the bug is and I know how to redirect them now. So what I normally will do is I'll... Um, create a, a custom subdomain um, that says something like um, saltday.hawaiikakingmuseum.org and I make them type that in. So when they type that in, that page, that custom subdomain will redirect directly to the product page that I know works. Um, and what that does, and then I tell them, it's just going to reload the page, but now the bug will be gone. Um, so very annoying bug within Square, but the workaround is totally obvious, um, although it is annoying for customers. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. I do love Square and I do like all of their stuff. So just because there's a couple of bugs, this is why I wanted to make this and be able to help show you that there are workarounds. Um, so keep plugging away at it and um, enjoy the product. Mahalo, aloha, shaka. Mahalo, aloha, shaka.